Welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to talk about how to become a successful, well-established artist in your niche, in your domain. I know this might sound too good to be true. I am not saying this will be quick or easy. On the contrary, it will be a very difficult, lengthy process. But if you want to build a solid career, a successful business, quit your day jobs, and still not be a sellout, if you want to become, let's say, a decent artist, make a living, support your family, make sure you watch this video until the end. I want to talk about this because one month ago, an artist asked me exactly this question. He was a virtual reality artist in an art fair. I experienced his virtual reality using Oculus glasses and I was impressed with his immersive experience that he had presented me and I had a talk with him. He asked me this big question like, how can I become a successful artist doing virtual reality? Is there even a market for my art? Because virtual reality is not a thing yet. Like how to become successful? Like, of course, it's a difficult question to answer and I cannot answer him in one minute. So I thought to myself, I'm going to think about it and give him a real life example because the pandemic already started back then. And I think a lot of artists are losing faith. Right now, human being is facing this one of the biggest challenges that we have ever faced in the past 30 years. I don't know, before I was born, maybe there are bigger challenges, but this is right now the most urgent and the biggest issue that we all face. Hundreds of thousands of people are fighting for their lives, and this is the closest thing to a global war, but not war to each other, but war to a common enemy, that is COVID-19. And I wanted to give an example of an artist who is achieving more than ever during this difficult time. Right now, artists taking a back seat in the car. I know in this vehicle right now is like a speeding vehicle, like downhill to an unknown future. Art is in the back seat, and let's hope it's buckled up so when we stop, we can restore the art market and bring art to restore our faith. And I know art is important and it's especially important for us as we are making art and doing things you know, in the art world. But right now we had to say that it's a very dark time and we are you know, in the backseat or in the trunk or let's hope it's not under the car. And it's very hard to be motivated. And I found this artist whose name is Luke Jaren. And I think he's a perfect example. Maybe you have seen some of his works before. He was making Play Me, I'm Yours public piano art installation, and he did also recreation of his dreams using hot balloon live band, and he made a very, very large interactive, large-scale public art. And as you can see, although he is a British artist, he's internationally known, and he was also uh, told to be the most famous artist that you don't know, because he's more known for his works than for his name. Name. And maybe you have seen this series of work called Glass Microbiology. Maybe you have seen this before because it's everywhere in the medical journals, magazines, newspapers. A lot of museums had collected his art. His work is one of its kind. As you can see, it's very distinctive, it's very sophisticated, it's very hard to achieve. And in this COVID-19 period, we need a lot of illustrations, a lot of photos to decorate the pages, to bring awareness to this virus that we are fighting against. His art had gone viral, but I'm not saying viral in a bad way, but it's a good way because he's bringing awareness to this common enemy that we are all fighting and is literally invisible. And in some interviews, he had stated the reason behind why he's making this. One of the reasons was the fact he was colorblind, that he's making this sculpture using glass that is not colored, it's transparent. And also he wanted to show us the real thing. The viruses don't have colors because they're too small to hold any colors. But in those journals, they color viruses and bacteria in order to show us the emotional content. If you want a healthy looking, harmless germ, harmless bacteria, you color it in green and in blues to show, you know, like a salad. If you want to show a highly lethal, like very bad viruses, you paint it in red, in orange, to show the alarming creature. I'm just saying that we add a lot of emotion to it, and he wanted to bring us back 
the color list to give another voice to the viruses to the microbiology and he works with a group of microbiologists scientists biologists and he works also with a professional uh, glass blowers with at least 20 years experience to achieve this precision and the first thing he did was HIV and after he did different things like E. coli and this wacky looking alien creature and malaria and after he donated occasionally from the auctions that he sold he donated to the foundations that are fighting against the illness caused by the very germs or viruses that he had created and sold for and I think it's a really really smart idea no matter if this is just a public campaign or is from the bottom of his heart I think he is making a positive impact in this world today and from the interviews I've seen he is still a very authentic curious intellectual human being very humble and uh, I don't think he is anyhow changed by the fame that he had been receiving lately and I'm very happy for him because since 2004 he had been doing this series now 16 years past obviously he deserves all of the fame the money the attention that he had been working for i want to tell this example of luke jerem to show you that today in this difficult time you can still be a very successful artist making a positive impact in the world and become famous and continue working towards your goals and i think he did three things right and if you follow his footsteps and do the following three things i promise you you will also be successful like Luke Jerem the first thing he did is to pick a niche of course he had other projects ongoing but obviously he picked this niche and defined it and then he continued doing this for the past 16 years so picking a niche is very important a lot of artists could not pick a fight could not pick a niche because they are so distracted you do one thing you know 10 minutes after you're like no I want to do a different thing that's very dangerous because if you want to be um, fighting different wars in different fronts you will not win any of that you can easily be distracted and you will not be established and known for any of the niche the second thing he did right was that he stick to it for more than 10 years and I think it's important for, to have a mid long term plan like the mid term is three to five years long term is 10 years and during that 10 years you don't change directions easily during the three to five years plan you don't change directions at all the last thing he did right was to keep raising the bars to make extreme perfection to let's say fend competitors off to continuously working and to become a better version of yourself information is publicly available right if other people see this is trending they can easily you know come over and try to compete against you as a sewer back leader wolf if you want to fend off other artists you need to keep raising the bars to be better to perfect your technique and dig deep in your discourse to continue promoting your art to be more well known by people so they know you as the microbiology artist you have to continue to maintain it in order to keep your position as the reference as the sewer back leader wolf as you can see if you can do these things in 10 years I promise you you will be successful you will be able to make a decent living now the next question is how can he know that this microbiology will blow up the answer is he didn't know when he did hiv he did e coli he didn't know that one day that there will be a global pandemic that will almost destroy the global economy and we don't know what will happen right so we still don't know let's say almost let's be positive and almost destroyed us right he didn't know and he still chose to do that for the past 16 years as you can see you need to pick the bet and bet on it and don't change your bets and that's very important to have the face virtual reality art do you think this will be a thing in the future we don't know but if you choose this is your fight you have to believe in it unfortunately sometimes you will make the wrong bet for example 10 years ago everybody was talking about 3d printing and they think that will be the future of logistics the future of production the future of art we will be making artworks using 3d printers like uh, maybe some kind of large-scale sculptures or micro sculptures or interactive art or gadgets and but no 
3D printing never really blew up completely and the artist who bet on 3D printing art unfortunately lost the bet. But it doesn't really matter. Even if you didn't win the jackpot, you can still become the reference in your niche and you can still make a decent living. Today, 3D printing artists are making decent living. You can sell your art. You can still become the reference in a small niche. You don't have to be the reference in a huge blowing up niche. You don't have to be mainstream to make a living. Instead, you are better protected in your niche because it's not trending, so there are not so many competitors. So you look at the bright side you will still be able to make it to dominate your niche to become a successful artist in your niche depending on what is the size of the niche if your art is somehow more mainstream and you think it's very hard to become the best you can choose let's say a region and you want to say okay I want to be the most successful artist in my region and regions are the future because right now with the pandemic we have realized that we need to be somehow more self-sufficient and later we will invest more money and energy and emotion in our regions in our community and you can become the most successful artist in your region as a mainstream artist and that's achievable in 10 years you can go somewhere with it stay focused keep working hard, keep perfecting your skills, your techniques, your discourse, and you will be able to do it. Even right now, life is difficult and it's full of uncertainties. That's all what I want to say today. Hopefully the example of Luke Jerem is giving you more hope and positivity. This is all what I want to say today. Now it is your turn to pick a niche, perfect your skills and make a five-year plan and 10-year plan. That's all. If you have any questions, make sure you leave me a comment below and see you in the next video.